Uh, so, um, just a quick reminder that the second talk in this session is going to be given by Keith Motz. Um, uh, since um, uh, Michael Steele already spoke earlier in the conference. Uh, and the first talk is given by Peng Shui uh, from the Physics Department at South Southeast University. And she's going to talk about quantum simulation and generalized measurements with photonic quantum models. Okay? Thanks for the introduction. And uh, uh, first, I would like to thank the organizers who invited me here and gave this great opportunity, uh, allowed me to introduce our recent experimental work on the quantum simulation and uh, the generalized measurement with photonic quantum walks. Here's our um, collaborators, including those from Southeast University, young researcher and postdoctor, PhD student, and those two are master students. And also, those are our um, great seriousist, um, Barry from Calgary at USCC, and also another uh, professor, Lushan from USCC, the different uh, department. And um, also, I should thank the grant that's all. By the way, I have to uh, make this announcement because uh, I, I, I'm aware that uh, the, uh, the topic of this workshop is multi-photon, but uh, I'm sorry to say uh, in my talk I only focus on single photon things. So, um, and uh, that's the uh, outline of my talk. So first uh, I'd like to uh, talk about the simulations via quantum walks, and then I'm going to talk about the experimental complete could, could you put the microphone higher on your shirt? Because it's hard to hear in the front row, so I'm sure in the back it's even worse. Yeah, sorry. That was better? I think so. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, then I got to talk about the quantum uh, the clouds and the revival of the coherent information included in the coherent, in the coin stage for the quantum block. And then I got to talk about the realization of generalized a measurement that's POVM by quantum box. And finally, I'm going to talk about the perfect state transfer by photonic quantum walk. And then the last topic for my talk is the violation of generalized and then contextuality inequality with single photons. It's a little bit uh, apart, apart from the quantum box, but this is our recent work, so I just want to uh, briefly mention. And, um, so I should thank uh, the previous speakers. They already gave the introduction to the quantum box because, as I said, I only focus on the single photon quantum box. So uh, in my talk, I only uh, want to uh, briefly remind you about this this free time quantum work on the line with single particles. That's the simplest case for the quantum work. And for the quantum work on the line, uh, there is a <coughs> walker. Uh, the walker can be realized by a particle whose motion is to one dimension, and that's because that the worker on the line or on the circle is one dimension. Okay, and the coin is just a two dimensional or two level system, so that means any uh, two level system can be regarded as a coin, just a qubit. And uh, the coin evolution or the coin operation of coin flipping can be realized by any single qubit rotation. Uh, for example, here we use a rotation around y axis. Uh, is the coin bias. And the condition of position shift moves the worker according to the outcome of the coin flipping along the line. And that's the um, condition of position shift operation. And that's the unit operation for a single step of this quantum work on the line. And as we already know, if you pay it to the classical random walk, the quantum work, the distribution of the quantum work is different, and the standard deviation of this distribution is proportional to time, and for the random walk is proportional to root of time. But because for random walk, the different paths add up, but for quantum walk, they interfere. So because of the interference, we get the different uh, characterization of the quantum walks. For the standard quantum walk, shows the ballistic spreading. Um, and here is the uh, previous breakthrough experimental result. And 
forgive me if I missed some uh, very nice work and very famous work. And uh, here is and also uh, some of the uh, authors for this uh, papers already here. So, uh, for example, the quantum work can be realized experimentally with the EMR system, trapped ions, neutral atoms, charged particles, molecules, yes, uh, coherent lines, single photons, and entangled photons. And in our experiments, we use the single photon source to be a photonic quantum work. And that is why we want to use quantum work to do the simulation. And I think Andrew and other speakers already gave this uh, reasons why we use quantum work to do the simulation. But for our work, uh, we want to use this quantum work to do the simulation simply based on all the degrees of freedom can be controlled. For example, we can use the side-dependent coin, the side-dependent transition, side-dependent phase effect, also the time-dependent coin, the time-dependent phase effect, and so on. So that gives us a lot of opportunity to control the whole thing or the whole system, and, uh, and it's easier for us to simulate uh, uh, other phenomena with quantum works. So here is our first experiment. Um, we uh, use a quantum, one dimensional quantum work with a site dependent phase effect to after the localization of the Walker site. So that's the initial operation for the single step of quantum work. It can uh, include the coin flipping and also this conditional position shift according to the coin site. And uh, the different thing is that we add a phase effect in the conditional position shift. So that is a discrete time quantum work with side dependent single point phase effect because it's a delta function. That means uh, whenever the walker passing through the original position x equals to zero, <coughs> then the walker will get a phase effect. And these quantum work uh, give us the opportunity to observe the localization instead of the spread, ballistic spreading of the standard quantum work. <coughs> Here is the experimental setup because this is our first experiment, so you can see the setup looks very uh, ugly, but uh, it works. Um, <laughs> so we use the um, polarization of single photons to do the coin, to, to present the coin, or to realize the coin. And the water can be realized by the spatial mode of the single photons. And the conditional position shift can be realized by the aligned beam displacer interferometry network. And the coin flipping can be realized by the halfway plate setting, halfway plate with certain setting angles. And the side dependent phase effect in our experiment is quite simple because we just use a phase shift and invert in the certain optical mode. So actually, uh, based on the um, post selection to do this experiment. And the detection realized we did have to be photon coincident measurements uh, between the signal and the trigger buttons. And also because we use the phase shift inserting to the certain optical certain uh, optical paths. So <coughs> the optical uh, compensator uh, can uh, have to be used to compensate the temporal delay caused by the phase shift. And here is uh, some measures. I think you already are very familiar with that. For example, we use the uh, type 1 SPDC to generate pairs of photons. And we trigger one photon, then the other is prepared in a single photon uh, site. And that's uh, the data. And the measurements, we use the ABD to detect the photons. It's like a single photon detector. And uh, for the uh, 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 beam displays or interferometer, I think most of the uh, experimentalists are very familiar with that. That's um, the optical axis of the beam displacers are cut. So the vertical <coughs> light just uh, uh, directly transmitted and the horizontal light will enter or uppermost uh, a displacement, but also transmit directly parallel to the vertical light. So that 
um, the horizontal lights will uh, go into the will go into the neighbor mode and will interfere with the vertical light in the same mode. So this kind of interferometer will give us a very high visibility. In our experiment, uh, usually it can be 0 0.998 or at least 0 0.995. <coughs> the, the only thing is that you have to put the optical axis of the beam displacers are aligned very strictly to ensure <coughs> high visibility. And that's the beta, the experiment beta. And uh, actually we add the yeah, phase effect pi and the original position x equals to zero. And you can see after four steps, you can alter uh, localization. And the localization here is representing by the pronounced peak probability in the original position. Uh, we did this experiment with 10 steps one four. And that's the recurrent probability. And the reason for the localization is that the, trans the trans translational <coughs> symmetry of an ideal or the standard ballistic quantum walk without any phase effect is broken by mod uh, modifying the phase of the walker whenever the walker passes through the original position. And actually, these uh, phase effects is kind of like a trap, a uh, potential trapping the photons with some probability. Remember? through the original position. And uh, actually there are several factors will uh, impact or influence the uh, observation of localization. For example, the additional phase. Like this experiment we add phase pi, but if we change phase from zero to pi, we can observe the different uh, pro uh, proper, uh, property of the localization. And also another uh, impact is uh, Another factor is coin bias. So here we give uh, uh, here we give some um, ex uh, examples. For example, we change the phase to factor phase to fact from zero to pi. We can observe that. That's the uh, distribution after ten steps of one more. So you can see that with pi increase. Uh, the strength of the observation is increased. It's not actually it's not uh, monotonic. You, you cannot see, but later I will show you. It will get the biggest uh, probability, recurrent probability, one to five equals to uh, 135 degree. And uh, that's the, uh, the factor of the uh, coin bias. How the factor of the coin bias? <coughs> this observation of the localization. That's in mon monotonic. Uh, from if we increase theta from 0 to pi over 4, now we can observe the localization more and more obvious. And that's very uh, easy to understand, because there are two extreme case, cases. One is when theta equals to 0, then you can imagine that's a coin, that's the coin flipping is um, sigma z, yeah, sigma z. For the sigma z, you can imagine the coin at zero state always goes to zero, then so the walker always goes to left. The uh, coin state is one, the, all, uh, the walker always goes to right, so they never go back to the original position. So whenever, well, whatever you add at the original position, wouldn't affect the, um, the property of the water. So that's the one extreme case. And uh, the other extreme case is uh, the coin flipping is sigma x. Then you get a perfect revival. Because the water start from zero, then go uh, up to the first step, goes to minus one or plus one, or uh, the superposition of minus one plus one. Then the second step goes back to zero. So it's always like this. Hopping from zero to plus one minus one. Then even you don't add any uh, phase impact, you still get a, a perfect revival of the coin uh, whenever, uh, when the even step. So that's easy to understand. But here we use this overlap between the localized initial stage and the initial coin, the initial state of the system, 
to extend this uh, behavior. <coughs> you can see that? That's the overlap. Just imagine if without, if we don't apply any phase effect, the eigenstate of the uh, unit charge operation, the single step, it would be ballistic. It's like the water distribution. That's ballistic. But if we add some phase effect, then we can observe a localized eigen. We can get a localized eigenstate. That's the Schumer state. And the initial state can be decomposed by the, this eigenstate if the overlap between the localized stationary state and the initial state of the system is big enough, that means we can observe the localization uh, after some evolutions eventually. So, so that's why we use the overlap between the lo localized stationary state and the initial state to explain the things. You imagine if we are uh, Add the phase effect in the position except for zero. For example, if we add the position, uh, the phase effect in position 10, do you think we can observe some localization? The answer depends on uh, where the water starts, right? If the water starts from zero, then the overlap between the localized eigenstate and the uh, initial state would be very small because the localized eigenstate would be, uh, have a great peak in the x equals 10. So uh, you cannot observe a localization, but if the water starts from x equals 10, of course you can observe. But usually, as we uh, know, for the quantum block system, usually the water starts from zero. That means if you want to uh, uh, out, uh, if you want to observe the localization, you have to apply this uh, phase defect near enough to zero. So that's uh, how we can uh, announce the localization of the quantum work. And that's the, uh, the second experiment of our group. We uh, set up still very ugly. Um, uh, before that, I introduced we had a single a uh, single point based effect at x equals to zero. But in this experiment, we add the phase effect is size dependent or is a function of the site, like this function of x. So we can see that if we add the phase defect equals to 2 pi times <coughs> 2 over p, then we can observe the cos cp rate quantum work. Observe the cosy periodicity in photonic quantum work. And what's cosy, what is the cosy period? It's defined the uh, time takes the water maximally back to the original position. And uh, this zero is published in 2000. Sorry, if, um, where is the zero paper? Okay. This zero paper is published in 2004. <coughs> it's done by, um, uh, sorry, I forget. Name of this Polish guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but, uh, yeah. And actually, we just follow the idea of that uh, zero paper and did this experiment. And the cost in theory is defined by the Polish guy. Um, is the Banachek? No, it's Boychan. Ah, okay. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Polish guy is good. <laughs> <laughs> it, now he's in Singapore. I get it, right, right, right. So, the cosmic period defines uh, the time it takes the water maximally back to the original position. And uh, in our age, sorry, uh, the position dependent phase shift uh, will lead to, uh, will lead to uh, the, uh, effective uh, uh, period potential. And um, in the zero paper, they explain <coughs> the how to uh, how do we group this uh, uh, dance, the energy dance of the quantum wash? I didn't show it here. It's just in the zero paper. And I think it's something like the U to P. U is the U, this unit operation to the single step. And U to P is close to identity. That explains the cost revival of the initial state after every P steps. And P is even if P is uh, odd. And uh, we get u to 2p is close to identity. However, u to np, that n, what was n increase, that means the cosy period increase. Then these 
Swedish opposition is far, far and far from the identity <coughs> connection. Because somebody used uh, Lan Zhang Xian and Tunneling to explain these things. But uh, uh, they only focus on our experiment. And this is the experiment result. We also did the experiment to, to push the number to 10 steps. And we choose P equals to 4. Then that means we offer two and a half causing periods of this. So here is the uh, position distribution, and here is also the position distribution after the second period, uh, causing periods. And that's the variance and uh, the recurrent probability. That means the probability of the walker go back to the zero position. So we can see that it is, um, you can see that it's obviously uh, causing period. And also this different color means different coin bias. Uh, it's very easy to understand. As I said, there are two extreme cases: theta equals to zero, yet sigma x, uh, sorry, sigma z equals to thing, theta equals to uh, pi over four. We get uh, sigma x with the thing. So um, with uh, coin bias change, we can observe the different uh, behavior of the cosy theorems. And uh, yeah, that's our. Third one, that's our third experiment. And just now I showed the causing period, but how can we observe a complete period, or sorry, a perfect period, or complete revival of quantum walk? With precision dependent phase defects, it's difficult to get a complete revival, but with high dependent coin, we can get a complete revival. That means after P steps, the unitary operation is equals to identity, not close to, but equals to identity. Then we can observe a complete revival of the coin state and the walker state. So here we use this the conditional, sorry, we use this time dependent coin and two coins. The first is the rotation uh, along uh, y axis, uh, along y axis is the fixed. And the second one is the um, rotation along x axis, and um, it's time dependent. So, and the, that's the condition of relationship, the same, and the unit operation. If we choose this theta and capital omega carefully, and after every uh, even number uh, step, uh, step, we can observe a completely revival complete revival of uh, the walker state and the coin state. That's the, uh, our uh, new paper published in PRL, and that's the, uh, <coughs> we just calculate to p equals to, uh, to, from 2 to 8, but it uh, can still go up. For every even number, you can get a perfect revival by choosing proper theta and capital omega. And here is the experimental setup. So you can see I uh, improve myself and get some uh, nicer setup picture. So here is a single point source. And so we use half a halfway plate to realize the, uh, the rotation along y axis. And to use this kind of corner weight plate, half weight plate, corner weight plate, set which type we plate set to realize the time-dependent uh, coin flipping along the x-axis. And actually, there's nothing wrong with this because it's like uh, that hand. So, 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 sorry about this. It should be a, a, a right hand. Uh, and that's our setup. And uh, here is the experiment <coughs> result. And if we choose theta equals to 0 and uh, capital omega equals pi over 8, we can observe um, Coffee, sorry, we can observe a complete revival after eight steps. So eight is the period. Uh, in this experiment, we push the number to 16. It, it's, it looks big, but the experiment is not complete. It's not so complicated because you can see the, uh, the speeding of the rockets not spread. Just goes to zero, uh, one, and uh, plus two, minus two. Um, Plus, two, uh, plus 4 minus 4 plus 2 minus 2, something like this. So 
just um, spread to four positions. So the experiment vision after two periods, we can see the scale after a very high, not very high, but it's big enough recurrent probability. And that's the topography of the constate after uh, six step, 16 steps. And we just do the conflict. And we just do the uh, topography of the constate when the worker is in a measured in an x equal to zero. So you can see the finality contained to the initial state is 0 0.8, 0.828. That's after 16 steps. Yeah, and that's something new, just uh, we just uh, did. Uh, it's very rough result, and just a very rough result, and just uh, want to mention a little. So in that revival quantum block, or in that uh, period this uh, big quantum block, we can uh, consider the walker as an infinite dimensional uh, reversal, and the coincide. The, con uh, the coherent information can be encoded in the coincide. And uh, with the time evolution, the coherent information will collapse. For example, here it collapse into uh, 0 0.6 something. Um, and finally, get revival at the period. So that sounds like the coherent information of the point state collapse and revival in a quantum block was designed uh, time dependent point. That's a, a, a rough result, and we just uh, still uh, do the experiment. So here, uh, that's our fourth experiment. And actually, I have to say that I'm very, as an experimentalist, I'm very young because I just started doing the experiment in 2013. So that's our third experiment, fourth experiment. Uh, we realized we use the one-dimensional photonic quantum block to realize a single qubit generalized measurement that's the um, UVN. Yeah, here's the Polish guy. Find it. So, it, we, we also follow this idea from him and his co-author as published in 2013 when we do the experiment. So, the quantum mechanics, the, as we know, the quantum mechanics forbids the deterministic uh, discrimination between non orthogonal sites, um, which partial distinguishability of non orthogonal sites is also very important for the quantum information processing. And quantum work is proven in this paper. Uh, to be universal for generating an arbitrary rank one and rank two single qubit positive operator value measurement <coughs> of POVM uh, compared to other implementation of POVM on a single qubit. Uh, for example, in other uh, implementation of POVM, more element of the POVM, we need larger Hilbert space of the ancilla system. But for the quantum of POVM, if we increase the element, we just need longer time evolution of the coupling. Because in this system, we uh, use the walker as uh, use the walker as an ancilla site and the coin as a, a, a system of interest or the system of being measured. But actually, it's tricky because if you in longer the evolution time, the Hilbert space of the walker is enlarged. So, but I think the very, very useful of this quantum block POVM is the procedure is programmable. That means we have a procedure for more elements, you just walk for longer time or for more steps of the quantum block, and you can realize this, uh, this POVM. And uh, here is the two examples we show. For example, if we want to distinguish two equally proper uh, single qubit sites, any uh, two non orthogonal single qubit state can be regarded as zero in the alpha zero plus beta one. So we can distinguish those two uh, and, and non orthogonal sites with three-step quantum block, which is encoded.
told this uh, 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 an author of the stage in a, con in a coin stage, and then the walker start from zero after three steps quantum walk with position dependent coin flipping. Then the walker will walk to the different position. That's the final step. So we can see that if we measure the walker in x equals to three, we don't know the initial state of the coin. That gives us the inclusive result. But if we measure the walker in x equals to one or x equals to minus one, then we can distinguish this to of the site. That's the, uh, the point. And that's the experiment setup. We use this tray. Also, this kind of procedure can be extended to multi 
particle state uh, transfer or higher dimensional state transfer that C uh, ID and uh, that's the experiment set up. Also, this is the canonic can, uh, process should be handled conflicting and that's the, uh, some data, the fidelity. So, for example, if after eight step, we can transfer the state of the coin from the position zero to position plus one minus plus one minus one, zero plus two minus two, plus three minus three, those seven uh, positions. And we just uh, uh, rotate the halfway plate to the different angles, then we can uh, make the coin state transferred from zero to any of the seven sides. That's it. And that's my, uh, how many minutes left? So we have to use an ancilla, and in this system, the ancilla 
is a cuted system, we require the probability of the ancilla being measured in one of the four possible states corresponding to the probability of the joint POVM element on the system of interest. That means we can realize the joint POVM. And that's the procedure to realize this kind of joint POVM. It's very uh, familiar. So this also includes a uh, 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 um, single cubic rotation on the system of interest that's a cubit. And that's a um, conditional uh, shift operation on the ancilla, that's a cubit system. And after the three steps of the evolution, we can realize this um, single qubit joint POVM on the system of interest. Yeah. So actually, these kind of uh, 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 rotation can be realized by halfway plate, and these kind of rotation can be realized by the sandwich type uh, wave plate steps. That's the experimental setup. And after this is for first the evolution, second evolution, and that's the third evolution. So for the first evolution, we can uh, get the probability of the uh, element of the joint POVM G plus minus, and that's G plus minus plus, and that's the other element of the POVM. That's the, um, how to realize this joint POVM. And the probability of the photons being measured in the state of the qubit in the 5 three plus or minus one corresponding to those the probability of the joint uh, uh, element, jo uh, the element of the joint POVM on the polarization state of the single photon. And here is the experimental result. So we can see that the measured average probability of the anti-correlations uh, is something like 0 0.8 18 and uh, it violates the boundary of this uh, LSW inequality and is in a good agreement with the uh, quantum <laughs> predictions, that means quantum mechanics win again. So that's our experiment, it's just a summary. And uh, here is uh, the conclusion because of the time, limit time, so I'm not going to uh, make the 